Hello there, guys, and welcome to another look at Sovereignty Crown of Kings. I am Agrippa Maxenius. I want to show you guys one of the coolest parts of the game to me, and that is Heroes and Magic. This is basically something that really adds flavor to the game, and I think it's something that you should take a look at. Now, guys, heroes are represented as cards in this game, and basically these cards um, can suddenly occur all of a sudden uh for instance you can have an adventurer that comes to your lands and asks to work for you and this could be one of the general cards in this case we actually have a different warlord card a different hero card and this one is a warlord card all standard units you control may reset their attack if you guys can't imagine just how useful that could be just imagine having a large force of men surrounding your enemy, hitting them for damage, and being able to hit them for damage once again that turn. These are the powers of these amazing hero cards. Um, I've got another one over here. Now, this one is not as good, I believe, but as you guys can see, this hero card, all standard units you control, may reset their attack. Once again, a very, very interesting skill. Um, allows me to attack twice. I think that's pretty cool. Um, and really, these are the ideas behind uh, the Warlords. Um, as you guys can see, I have two of the same, essentially. Um, so both very useful, but all Warlords have sort of different abilities. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a look at another race's Warlord to see how it differs. Now, as you can see, guys, each race has its own interesting sort of heroes. Now, in this case, my Taskmaster, um, all units you control have a minus one discipline for the remainder of this battle. Your opponent skips his next turn. This essentially gives us an extra turn at the expense of maybe losing just a little discipline for the battle. Uh, and this is the power behind these hero cards. Now, like I said, not every army will have a hero card. You either need to unlock that hero you need to assign it to the army, or it needs to come with the army. So without one of these cards, you could imagine that you'd be at a little bit of a disadvantage. All right, guys, now I want to introduce you to magic in the game. And to me, magic is one of the most fun parts of this game. If you take a look here at this sort of multicolored panel here, we're going to go ahead and click it. This is your magic panel, or your spell tree, however you want to refer to it. Now, of course, each different culture, class, race, etc. has its own sort of spell trees. But you start to increase this magic XP by investing actual gold into how much you want to learn and essentially how much magic you want to give to your particular clan. Now I do have a magic spell here. It's death. This spell has been learned. I'm going to go ahead and cast it. And this basically gets rid of a unit's fighting will. It's really not that great of a spell. It's one of the starting spells, but I'll show you how it works. It also allows us to get a good look at the enemy army. So we're going to go ahead and hit one of these warlords units and boom we have cast nightmare on iron barony's unit uh this is one of the ways to use magic obviously we get better and better spells as we progress along the lines and some of these spells are just outright unbelievable now guys remember when i told you that each culture and race has their own spell tree um this is one of the magic heavy actual cultures in the game it's the area of malador this is an area of dark necromancers that have broken away from the Beruvian Empire. I just want to show you guys some of the amazing spells available here. One of them is Acid Rain. It's a particular favorite of mine. Black Rain pours upon a forested province, damaging economy one. Uh, we also have this one right here, Plague. A foul wind issues from your lands. One province you own is afflicted by the plague. Now, this is perfect if you have enemies in your provinces. So each of the cultures has their own sort of magic system. And Palamor's magic system seems, or excuse me, Malador's magic system seems to be based on area of effect spells. It seems to be based on basically destroying the enemy's economy um, and or just destroying certain parts of land. We corrupt land. This is something I find very interesting in the game, an exceptionally cool feature, and each culture has their own sort of magic system. Now, as you can see with the Beruvian Empire, the actual magic spells are a lot more based on the economy. As you guys can see, we actually have an exotic market spell. An exotic new market opens in your realm. Choose a resource you own that is not currently being traded. It will transform into something new. So it's really, um, depending on the culture you take, they're going to have their own sort of spell tree. Um, Morning Glory, the sun shines in your radiant glory. All evil units in your realm receive a, a negative two discipline. So these are the spells for the Beruvian Empire. And obviously, I don't want to show you guys all of these spells. I don't want to show you guys level 5 spells until you buy the game, but I am showing you 3 and below. King's Call is one of my favorite. Teleport any army you own to your capital. You must have room for your incoming army. That army gains plus 2 dip discipline for the remainder of your turn. This is especially useful if you've overextended a bit. You need to get those troops back to the capital to defend it, and believe me, I've done that more than once. Now, as you guys can see here, magic investment is really what affects how quickly you unlock these spells. Um, I obviously don't want to put all my gold into it, but let's say I was to put 
15% of my gold. You can actually see the scales tipping. Let's make it 20%. And now I'm actually putting 1,612 gold pieces into basically learning magic every turn. Um, depending on the kind of way you like to play. Me personally, I'm not a huge magic guy, so I usually just invest about... 10 to 15 percent sometimes less um but if you're interested in magic take a magic heavy race like palomore for instance go ahead and invest a ton into the magic and watch your opponents fall well guys i hope you enjoyed this look at heroes and magic in the world of sovereignty crown of kings i think this should give you one more reason to buy the game and i can't wait to see you guys on the battlefield Put your ARs on the forums. I'd love to see how you guys are playing, how you guys are doing. I'm currently playing as Kazoth, having a blast doing it, and I hope you guys are doing well too. Take care, and have an awesome day.